next speaker is Mr. Samuel W. Chung. Uh, he is a research professor from University of Utah. Yes, my name is Samuel Chung. I was born and raised in Korea, but I live in the United States. Uh, can you hear me back there? Okay. <clears throat> I will talk about the uh, wind energy technology applied to high-rise building or high altitude. Um, in terms of the comfortable living, I think we cannot live without the electricity. Can you live without the electricity? My microphone will not be working. The lighting will not be working. Your elevator will not be working. How can you live? We must have electricity. So, however, <clears throat> to generate electricity, we used to use fossil power plant. Fossil is dirty. It creates carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. It uh, creates global warming temperature problem. And nuclear, you see, you've seen what happened to Fukushima uh, incident. That's dangerous. People say, uh, some people said that nuclear plant is, is safe. I don't think it's safe. I would ask them if, if I can build a nuclear plant in their backyard. I don't think they, they, want, they want it. So the solution is we cannot use fossil plant. We cannot use nuclear plant. What's the solution? Solution is use utilizing wind. The wind blows all the time. Uh, wind blows from east, let me see, from west to east all the time. And we can take advantage of it. Uh, first of all, to go into the wind, uh, yeah, wind for high rise, for everybody so far today, what I've seen is structural response, how to design for the wind, how to reduce the wind forces, but wind, we cannot avoid the wind. That means we have to de design for structural response, response, either dynamic or static. And also, wind will create dynamic laws. Uh, wind has, it has frequency and it creates dynamic. Whether frequency is high or low depending on the building design. But thirdly, if you look at, look at it again, we can take advantage of wind load. We will use wind to turn the turbine, wind uh, electric generating turbine. In terms of turbine, uh, there are two different kinds. One is a horizontal axis, like airplane. Like you see, most of the uh, windmills all over the world, propeller turns like an airplane this way, and the uh, axis is a horizontal axis. What I'm proposing is vertical axis. It has number of advantage by using vertical axis. I don't know why people don't use it. That's why I'm here for. I flew all the way from Salt Lake City, Utah, to um, encourage you to think of vertical axis windmill. And also, what I like to propose is what we call net zero building. For this building, if we build a windmill, 
sizable windmill, as well as uh, solar panels, the, this building can itself, uh, the energy can be created self-sufficient. That's what we mean net zero building. Uh, in the United States, uh, it's a great deal of emphasis and research being done for net zero building. Uh, uh, in terms of wind, uh, I don't want to go into too much of a mathematics, but uh, uh, the first chapter in the wind textbook is always uh, utilizing gamma function. Gamma function is a particular uh, differential equation of Euler differential equations. It's, it's, it's not like uh, Euler, the column theory. Okay, we're not my purpose is not going into too much of a mathematics at this time. Uh, next is important. Uh, v is wind velocity, and V0, V0 is wind velocity at certain elevation, like 10 meter above ground, and uh, H is uh, elevation, uh, H0, like 10 meter of elevation from the, from the ground. And the H could be the top of a high-rise building, so it could be 1,000 meters or 2,000 meters, whatever it takes. And uh, also, wind pressure, P divided by P0 is uh, Three powers, third power of H over H0. You see, we take great advantage. Wind pressure is extremely higher as you go up higher in the building. So, <clears throat> this is a difficult for the overall structural design purpose, but it's a great advantage for the, the electric generations. And next stage is the wind energy is, is of a time history. It fluctuates. Uh, wind is, sometimes wind blows hard, strong, and sometimes the wind is calm and up and down, so it's of time history. Time history means frequency, and frequency means period. Now, the most difficult problem for wind energy is how to store the energy. If you can store the energy and reuse it, uh, when wind is down, we are in great success. But so far, technology is, is not, nobody using that technology. The horizontal axis windmill that you see everywhere in Europe, in the United States, in Asia, in Korea, they all use horizontal axis, like airplane propeller blade. My windmill is not an airplane. And horizontal axis has disadvantage. Windmill being so high up there, and the maintenance is a huge problem. No, no workers want to go up so high, so windy conditions to repair the, the windmill, wind turbine. So once it's up there, that's it. They cannot repair. They cannot do anything. And also, they only produce the electricity. My windmill is not only produce the electricity, but also it can conserve the energy, store the energy for downtime. So my, I will go into details, but first, 
my windmill will pump up the water to uh, uh, elevated water tank. And also it charges through various gearbox, it charges air compressor tanks. And of course, it charged, it makes a battery charge, and water pumps, and also refrigeration compressor. For the building, uh, previous speaker from Austria um, was questioned about the humidity. We have to, we cannot live under the humidity condition. It's too hot and muggy. That's what Chicago is. It's hot and muggy, but it's a very windy uh, city. This, it's a nickname, the Windy City. They got to take advantage of a strong wind. Wind can be equated to asset. Asset means money. We can make money from the wind, windy conditions. Now, <clears throat> This is the existing elevated water tank uh, in the United States or flatland in Europe. Uh, this is uh, quite common, these elevated water tanks. But it doesn't have to be. I just use the shape of elevated water tank, but it doesn't have to be water tank. It can be served as an air compressor tank. And that combined with vertical axis wind blade. Wind blade is, uh, there are eight blades, vertical axis. And then it has turbine generator right, right above. The diameter, most of diameter of stem is eight feet in diameter. So you can use, uh, uh, you can install a turbine generator. And, uh, at the bottom cone here, bottom side, uh, you can attach various gearbox and then attach to various uh, attach attach to uh, this doesn't work uh, the various gearboxes. Elevated water tank pump, air compressor pump, battery charger, water pump, refrigeration pump, and all those things. So this is uh, the advantage. The existing horizontal axis windmill doesn't have any of these. While I have, with spending a little bit more money, we can, we can uh, generate, we can um, store the energy. That's the whole purpose of it. These are the details of connections with the blades and existing uh, elevated water tank and also the blades should have a stabilizer and uh, vertical axis wind blade. So it has definite advantage. And also details and connections of vertical axis windmill. Uh, same as the vertical axis. Now the blaze, these are bla eight blaze if you look at vertically like this so this will take wind this will take wind pressure and turn it around and wind in terms of a horizontal axis it only effective for wind being horizontal wind is not horizontal wind can blow up and down and horizontally in every directions so so it will take the wind from a any direction. Uh, wind pressure 
these are the cross section of blades and these are wind pressure. Uh, wind pressure is third power of the, the elevation, the height of the location. And uh, so uh, wind, I take integration to take the um, uh, total wind power, uh, but it's not the purpose of this conference. It's a more mathematical integration, so I like to avoid that. I know architects don't like uh, mathematics. Th at least that's what my department shows. Now, uh, please don't get me wrong. This is my only my suggestion. I don't mean to insult French people or any other people, or the architects, or designers, but it's my suggestion. Eiffel Tower is being so old, it's longer than 120 years, it's a rivet con connections. The rivet connection for 120 years can be subject to a, a shear failure. It takes a, a strong shear stresses and uh, it can be failed any time. I, I was afraid of going under the uh, Eiffel Tower. But anyways, if you can put a vertical axis windmill, free windmill, it will generate enough of electricity for the vicinity of Eiffel Tower territory area. And uh, this is a 9-11 building, and I like to in, I like to install a, a vertical axis windmill, which I hope will generate enough of electricity for net zero building. And the last one <laughs> is nowadays all the days. We don't have to starve to keep the freedom. Now, economy is bad, and also pollution is bad. So we, freedom is important, but also our economic conditions. Take advantage of wind and generate enough of electricity is what we need. Okay, any question, please? You can ask in Korean. I'm fluent in Korean. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Uh, I have a question. The vertical axis have a problem of efficiency in a turbulent region. Uh, so on top of high-rise tower, it's going to be turbulent. And how efficient is going to be your suggested I mean, uh, vertical well, axis well, turbine? I don't know. Well, apparently horizontal axis system came from Denmark or someplace in Europe. And then without thinking, they just accepted all of a sudden. This issue, windmill issue, is, uh, it's been long. You know, all the Dutch people used windmill, but that's, that's old age. Uh, recent uh, windmill is recently uh, started from the last uh, Danish company and German, Siemens German company, then without even thinking, they import it everywhere, and that's the problem. You have to stop and think how to maintain, maintain the, the mills and how, efficient, how efficiently you can generate the electricity and so forth. The uh, bottom line is, we cannot live without the electricity. Can you live without, without the electricity? That's it. Thank you. <laughs> I think the um, difference between uh, normal wind turbines and, and this um, technology is that the wind turbines have always different speeds. Yes? And this technology is that you have always um, the same speed but you have a gear down under, and then you can control the energy. But the, the 
wheel over there make always the same um, speed. Yes. And so it doesn't matter when you have very strong wind, then you have then it don't goes faster. And uh, all the uh, all the compressor gearboxes are located on the ground, so that if there is anything wrong, a uh, maintenance people jump right into it and fix it. Uh, while horizontal axis, uh, you have to go up to uh, 300 feet above ground, and wind is uh, so strong. I don't want to work up there. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>